just as soon as it will let me. Here we go. Right, so those of you who are here are here for a workshop. Those of you who are coming in on the recording, you'll catch all of the bloopers because I never, ever, ever, ever edit these videos. What you see is what you get. So a um, little recap of what we've already done this week. Um, we've spoken about how bringing pure presence to our present can you know, give us a much more refined way of living. I spoke in particular to mature women who have spent their lives people pleasing, who spread themselves so thin amongst all of the other things that they've got to do in, in their life that no one gets close to her because her love and attention is split in a million different directions. I also spoke earlier in the week about the consequence of when a mature woman is people pleasing, they play small with everyone and in every situation. So I invited you, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, to leave your past in the past because it only keeps you stuck there and allow the future to unfold as effortlessly as you can without projecting your worries from the past into the future. Now, I know all of that was easily said um, and more difficult, more difficult to actually do. So um, I've, that's why I decided to actually make this a live workshop. Um, the thing is that if you can manage to leave your past in the past, and allow your future to unfold, you will have less depression and less anxiety. I'll come back to that in a minute. So if you can choose to be present in your present, yeah, then you've got it made. I have developed um, a program called the Three Ps System, which will get you into many of these areas, all those one-to-one -one coaching opportunities as well with me at the moment. But again, I'll come back to that a little bit later on. Um, Oh, yes. Then um, earlier on in the week, I invited as many people to join um, the group as possible to get in on this recording. Uh, as I said to the one person who's here live at the moment. Oh, sorry. We've got a couple of people live. Um, the recording will go into the Facebook group, but it will only be visible in the Facebook group, which is private in there. So. On Wednesday, I did a little bit of a live when I got back from having my hair done um, because having my hair done and getting my nails done and all that stuff is, is part of how I look after myself. Um, because those, those moments when I am present nowhere but the hairdresser, yeah, or um, in this case, sitting in her kitchen, looking out of her patio doors onto the grass, watching my dog and her dogs run around like lunatics. Um, it's it's so fun. It's like a proud parent payment moment for me. Um, but as I said earlier in the week, I really learned about being present in the present when I was studying breath work. Um, just to go back a little bit further than my studies for breath work, though, my um, my first experience of formal training was when I got help for my binge eating disorder and my addiction to intense exercise. That coach then hired me to mentor her clients. So that's when I started to get experience of doing this work that I'm doing now. I then did a 10 month somatic coaching certification, an eight month breathwork certification, and both of those certifications are trauma informed. Um, there's some stuff on my Facebook group, I think, certainly on my web page about what it means to be trauma informed. And um, I'll actually make a note of that so that I'll go in um, after this, this little workshop. And if it was a while ago that I last did a video about being trauma informed, I'll do another one. So T-I info. Yeah. So let's not get distracted with that. Let's move on. So Earlier on in the week, um, I gave you the opportunity to reach out to me to get some coaching. And uh, for those of you who have not worked with me before, uh, I do actually have some capacity next week for, I think, one, maybe two of you to have a free session with me. So if anybody's watching this re replay and they'd like to just do a tryout session, 
with me next week. Um, let me know and we'll see whether or not the gaps in my diary fit your availability and indeed whether or not you're a good fit to work with me. So being present in the present, let's go back to there again. Your body and your nervous system create, create well, even craves, as the first major blooper, craves peace, the status quo doing what you've always done, repeating patterns. Your brain is made of all of these patterns that, that are repeated over and over again. And it actually takes conscious effort and work to rewire those patterns. And the thing with your body craving peace and continuance is that the outside world has absolutely zero respect for that. None at all, none. Whether it's family, work, school, kids, dogs, neighbours' dogs, um, whatever, all of these things are going to intrude on your status quo. But dream, being truly present removes the mental cues that you are giving yourself for depression and anxiety. The world outside cannot take away your inner peace if you do not give a shit. Mm? Really, honestly. A bird... I think this is one of those Confucius things. A bird does not worry whether or not a twig that it lands on is going to hold its weight because he is certain that his wings will. Let me say that again. A bird doesn't worry if that twig is going to hold its weight because he knows that its wings will. Yeah. So what is this being present in the present all about? The... I've, I've kind of broken it down into, into three steps. There's kind of like two prep steps and then the doing it, yeah? So the first one is to release the past's grip on you. You can do that in any number of ways. When I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, um, there are lots of different kinds of tools, whether that's creating boundaries, whether that's writing letters, whether that's um, working with a particular meditation exercise or a breathwork technique, there's all kinds of things, you know, there's just four out of about 50 odd different tools that I employ when I'm working with clients. But if you were to boil it all down, condense it into three steps, it would be active acknowledgement to start with. Right. So in order to release something in the past that's keeping you in the past and not in the present, um, you need to actively, consciously and completely acknowledge what it is that's happened because that isn't who you are that's something that's happened to you yeah you're not broken there's nothing wrong with you you've just had stuff happen to you the next step is forgiveness which sounds really corny when I say it out loud yeah but forgiveness is key and I'm not just talking about you know forgiving somebody for doing something horrible because the action is probably not what you want to be forgiving. You want to be forgiving the person. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. Say um, someone very close to you died suddenly when you were young. Say a school friend, you know, somebody you had that connection with. You can't forgive the person for dying. Yeah. But you can forgive um, the circumstance. You can forgive yourself for feeling alone when that happened to you. And then the next step is gratitude. So in that example, you know, you, you come to terms with the acknowledgement and you forgive the situation, um, but not the person. Um, and then you go into gratitude for what you learned having been left alone. Um, one of the more difficult examples that, that comes to me quite often, actually, because I'm a trauma informed somatic coach, because I deal with emotional health. Um, I'm quite often dealing with clients who have experienced abuse of one form or another. Now, this again, I'm very clear on this. First of all, you actively acknowledge that this happened to you. 
almost looking at it from you know thirty thousand feet up. You know, a thing happened. You are not the thing. You're not even a victim of the thing. At this point, you're just actively acknowledging that this thing happened. And then comes the forgiveness. Now, with abuse situations or personal attack situations, forgiveness can be even more difficult. And when I work with clients, um, we will we will first approach this from a forgiveness angle. Um, and if it's impossible for the action, the thing that happened, if it's impossible for that thing to be forgiven, uh, if it's impossible for that person to be forgiven for doing the thing they did to you, then we move from acknowledgement to acceptance, accepting that it happened, no longer denying it, no longer pushing it away, no longer saying that's that person did that horrible thing and, and I'm the victim. Yeah, Actually wrap yourself around it and then go on to the gratitude. Now, again, gratitude is very different, difficult when you're talking about you know, abuse of some sort. And um, so, again, acceptance rather than gratitude. Or, or you could be actively grateful for the lessons that it taught you. So the next step to becoming present in the present um, is planning. Now, the planning aspect is to get to grips with what's out there in the future, what's creating anxiety. Remember, we said the past is where your depression lives. The future is where your anxiety lives. Yeah. So at this point, wouldn't it be nice to sit in the middle and have neither the past nor the future? So this is where um, in my three piece system, I talk extensively about planning. Um, and this is not control. This is planning so that the future doesn't get inside your head and turn over and over and over um, and cloud your judgment so that you're not worrying about the future. It, it's almost like you get um, a degree of reassurance that what has to get done will get done because it's in the plan. Yeah, You do the plan, you follow the plan. Mm -hmm. But also in that planning, I encourage in a big way, self-care. Now, again, little segue off to the side, little Tanya's tangent. Um, that is not the kind of self-care that most people think of. Um, it's not massages and bubble baths. Yeah, it is the sort of self-care that becomes part of your daily life. A standard of self-care, you know, like a, like a minimum standard. Um, say you're a young mum, you've got a screaming baby, yeah? It is not your job to be super mum and start teaching that three-week-old child about the difference between Schubert and Mozart, yeah? The bare minimum standard of care required for that baby is food. Change them. Sleep. Feed them, change them, put them to sleep. And the one little nugget of advice that I can give from my time as a stepmom is if you've got really troublesome kids, sleep when they sleep. And um, that's my little nugget. Anyway, so in part of that, you know, step two planning to get the future out of your head is make sure you plan in self-care. I think it was last week or the week before I had a bit of a light bulb moment when I was out walking the dog. And I went live on my Instagram and said, you know, look, everybody, I've just had this moment. Yeah. How about you go for a walk and take the dog with you? Rather than it being a chore of walking the dog. Instead, you go for a walk yourself and you take the dog with you. Say so the chore of picking the kids up from school. Yeah. You could go for a walk and pick the kids up on the way home. Yeah. You could go for a little drive, pick the kids up on the way home. 
and I'm not talking about like you know driving for an hour and doing the last 10 minutes of the journey with the kids in the car yeah I'm talking about the way you look at that chore could essentially be self-care with a chore on the side today I went out for two walks today I went on a long walk this morning and I happened to take the dog with me and I chatted with a couple of trees um, I chatted with a couple of people um, you know who I shan't say his name because he's snoozing on the sofa at the moment but uh, he is having a little bit of a phase of hunting quite a lot I think it's because it's this time of year but anyway as soon as he hears a rustle in the bush he's in the bush in the bush hunting whatever creature it is that's in there so we had that long walk this morning and I know that the second walk of the day is usually more of a chore. But I decided to consciously take a break between my last client, um, who was a mindset client, and this workshop. Um, you know, I could have sat in front of the telly, I could have read a book, I could have, you know, eaten some food, whatever. No, I decided to have a little walk around outside before it got too dark. And so went outside, happened to take the dog with me. So step three of this little plan then, so so far we've done releasing the past, which is sometimes very difficult because we, we create patterns in our present from our past. Step two, planning, get the future, get to grips with the future so that the future doesn't freak you out, right? Step three, presence. Now, this is where my trusty whiteboard comes in. Um, I was going to create a worksheet and then I thought, you don't need a worksheet, you just need a piece of paper and a pen. Yeah. So at home right now, make sure you've got a piece of paper and a pen. If you're watching on the replay, pause, get yourself a piece of paper and a pen. Um, doesn't have to be big. Yeah, just a piece of paper and a pen. So step three, the presence itself. Creating presence in your life gives you back people and pastimes that feed your passion for what truly matters. Yeah, let me say that again. Creating presence in your life gives you back the people and the pastime that feed your passion for what truly matters. One of the things I do when I get present is jigsaw puzzles. Because you have to be very focused on a jigsaw puzzle to look at a piece, to find out where it, where it fits, compare it to the picture. It's almost like, um, oh, what did I call it last week? Intentional mindlessness. It's almost like meditation because I stop thinking about everything else. It's like when I'm on a march in the woods, I'll, I'll have a good day and I'll feel active and I'll go out in the woods and I'll be marching along and I'll forget all about the to-do list that I've got at home. And the how of this little two stage thing, which I'll do on the board, it goes like this. You have to acknowledge that depression is keeping you stuck in the past. Anxiety is projecting your fear into the future and being present in your present brings you peace. So the first little thing is, is more of an explanation. In order to be more present, in order to be the kind of you that you want to be, you need to do so much, yeah? You've got to work, you've got to cook, you've got to do housework, there's all, all of that stuff, yeah? But in order to do all of that stuff, there's one simple thing you need, and that's life force. Your life force. So imagine that that's your life force. And it's coming up into this simplified diagram that comes from um, a psychologist called, oh, crikey, it's something like S-T-U-T-Z, I think. Anyway, so he, he encourages his clients to build their life force in three stages. Because therapy, which is what this guy does, has been for many, many years a talk therapy that personally I think is a load of whatnot. It gives you a great opportunity to go and dump all of your problems. 
which is why instead of choosing to train to be a therapist, I trained to be a coach because coaches take you forwards and therapy, generally speaking, looks at your past. Yeah. So, but with this, with this life force principle, there are three things that you can do to improve the flow of your life force. Sounds a bit woo woo, stick with me, yeah? The, these three stages are set out this way because this bottom one has the biggest area and carries the load of the other two. If you imagine this like a pyramid, yeah? And this is your body. If you're depressed or anxious, if you look after your body first, then other things become easier. Other things can become stacked on top of them. And that's the reason why I went for somatic coaching training. Looking after your body can mean what you eat, what you drink, how you move. Interestingly, I was coaching a client this afternoon and the most productive bit of that entire session was when I asked him to get up off his chair and just bounce and yeah, just move his body, shake his arms around, just bounce up and down to create a state change in his body. Rather than sitting down, being still, staring at a screen, focusing on um, a situation that was really bugging him, I took all of that focus away and just got him to bounce up and down. And within about 15 seconds, he was grinning. Yeah, This state change in your body can support the other two levels of encouraging this flow of life force. The second level, um, this chap here uses the word uh, people. P -O -P -O -E. I don't know if you can see that. It says people anyway. But the word that I use in this section is connection. And that can be connection with people, quite obviously, yeah. But it can also be connection with nature, with animals. And that's why I tend not to use the people word, yeah. Once your body is happy, building connection with the world around you is going to become easier, yeah, once you're looking after your body. And then the top section is self. And that's where you can do your self-improvement, your um, personal education. Because if your life force is blocked here, because you're not looking after your body, your life force only goes this far. Once you're looking after your body, your body then becomes part of your existence rather than just your existence just being inside your brain so once your body is part of your existence this life force comes up a level but then if there's then a block in creating connection or a block in connecting with people around you yeah, then that's where your life force is going to stop but once you're looking after your body, creating this connection becomes easier. It's all the right connection in the red. And at this point, your life force can come straight up and start fueling yourself. But again, there could be a block. But don't worry about the block, yeah? Because once your life force is coming up through you in this way, supported by your body, supported by connection with either nature or people around you or a good coach or however that works for you. It could be um, a partner, a family construct. It could be the people who you work with. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people who work in really close knit teams and they spend more time as individuals 
with that team at work than they do with their family. But once they're looking after their body, once they're maintaining that connection, fueling that connection, then looking after the self, then focusing on the self becomes possible. And it's also supported. Not only is it possible, but it's supported by these two other steps. Just going to clear that off. There we go. So the next step that I'd like to go through with you is how you can actively sort out that connection layer and sort out your body layer before you try and sort out all of your mental stuff yeah because the first step is to be present if you're working with a coach you'll need to be present with that coach and to do this it's ever so simple you draw a line across the top draw a line down the middle and this is where you're starting to put your ideas in but to start with think about these as activities um yes yeah, so what we're gonna we're, what, what, what we're gonna put in here is activities foods people places yeah but they're gonna come in two headings right so first of all think of a few things that feed you Things that light you up, things that make you happy, whether it's listening to morning bird song while you stand at the kitchen window with a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's not only an, an activity, but it's also a food with your coffee, it's places being in your home. Yeah. And on this side, look at things that deplete you. I think that's how you spell deplete. And the long and the short of this entire workshop is to look at the, at the activities, foods, people and places that feed you, that light you up, that give you back so that your body is grounded and connected before you start to tackle the heavy stuff of self. And look at the things that deplete you, the things that make you unhappy. Yeah. And simply... Do more of this and less of that. If that exercise is not landing with you, yeah, there's one that's very similar. I'll give you that one as well. So we've got feed me, deplete me. The other one, I was taught by a wonderful coach called Andrea, probably, I don't know, two weeks ago. It's brilliant. She's brilliant too. This is called the joy list. And on this list, come up with, stick with it until you get there, 20 things. 20 things that bring you joy. My dog, my coffee, sunshine, even when it's cold. Um, a good pair of slippers, yeah. Um, some of the pictures that I've got around my office bring me joy. Yeah, all of these things bring me joy. And keep writing them until you've got 20. And then once you've got 20, try and do, see, touch, experience three a day. And if you've got a list of 20, then doing three a day, easy you've got 20 to choose from so that's the practical side of this workshop so um i'm looking for at the moment just because i have the capacity um i'm looking for a couple of people who've not worked with me before to uh, reach out to me for um, to see if we can arrange a quick session for next week. Um, I've got a few slots. They've got some stuff I need to do too. Um, so choose you. Reach out to me either in a comment below this video or in a direct message. Essentially, I'm looking for um, women who have 
spent most of their lives supporting others. Um, maybe the um, mums, career women as well. Um, people whose value of themselves does not start with themselves. That sounds a bit complicated, doesn't it? So maybe things like um, if you acknowledge that you're a people pleaser, if you acknowledge that everybody else comes before you, yeah, those kind of people. But um, these people also need to want to look at things in a different way. They need to feel that now is the right time for them to make some changes. Because these sessions that I'm offering next week um, are going to be like, you know, one off free sessions where we can dive into one thing quite deep. Um, I'm looking to spend about an hour, maybe 90 minutes with you um, just so that you can experience somatic coaching. Um, but yes, reach out to me if you've not worked with me before and we will go through all of that. So. I'm just going to open up the chat. Like I said, I know there's only one person in here live, but if you have a question, question, young lady, please feel free to type it in the box now. Um, once this video gets posted in the event on my Facebook group, I will keep an eye on the comments there um, and will do my best to answer any questions there. Um, if you haven't got anything to type in, um, if you're able to or willing to unmute yourself and ask a question out loud, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, but uh, I'm going to be closing this Zoom in about three, four minutes max. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to write over things now. So remember, you've got the, the triangle with your body at the bottom carrying you. Your connections in the middle and the self at the top. Um, you've got the what feeds me, what depletes me list. Yeah. Um, as an alternative, you can use your joy list, come up with 20 things and attempt to do three a day. And I'm not going to put an end date on it. I'm not going to say do three a day for a week. Right. Because I would like you to get this list longer and longer as your life goes on, as you experience more things, if something happens that brings you joy, yeah, write it on the joy list and then see how many times you can incorporate it into your free day. If you get really good at this, you might end up with a list that's got a hundred things on and you're doing five every single day. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool to do five things every day that bring you joy or touch five things? You know, whether it's a beautiful vase, I've got a plant over there that has the most velvety leaves. Um, but the first one I had, I killed because I kept touching it all the time. Plants don't like massages. Who knew? But anyway, um, it's been fun doing this. Um, I'm now off to do something that brings me joy. I hope that you can think of something that brings you joy. And I hope that the content this week and in this workshop will help you to become more present in your present. I'll see you soon.